friend, let's uh, show you how to make dust crap animation things. Obviously, a uh, crap thingajig will be made, aka a blank project. You need that, trust me. Alright, after that, no, I'm fucking god, get the hell out. Alright, so you got this crap over here. Um. I could show you how to make a bass player. I don't know how to add some annotations to skip most of this shit, so... Basically, sorry about the resolution, I'm just trying to save my ass on upload time, by the way. Okay, so, new blueprint and shit in this place. In that, you can take a character and get name player. I'm only gonna add, like, west movement, but basically you can drop it on the world. You should remove the thingamajig from the middle like I did. Unless simple basics um let's see if w can be called yeah we can do it the cheap way so basically you want the even even tick from here then uh gate actually no a sequence this is like <coughs> having multiple shit happen all right a gate this is just having a shit happen multiple times basically this will be called every frame uh, when w is being held and what do we want to do is add movement input and this this moves the player character let's get actor forward obviously because we want to move forward there we go alright let's do this duplicate control C control V you know that shit okay and then in here I want the S because we want to be going backwards connect the second pin from the sequence and to go backwards, we just put minus one as the scale value. Kawaii ass fuck. Alright. Next one. And then we don't get the forward vector, we get the right vector. Get actor right. Vector. Like so. Move to right. We need to get A. And for A, it's minus one. We can just copy this. Like so. And here we are. And here it's just one because D is going right. Alright, that should be the most basics of movement compile. See if the player moves. Oh, and if you need to go into the player setting, so select the player in the world, like so. Scroll all the way down, a little bit up. Auto possess player zero and input, I would put player zero as well. Then you can. Oh my god, do I really have to do it like that? And now W, ASD, move you around. <coughs> the right way to do it would be to go into edit project settings, input, action mapping, add a new button such as go forwards, asshole. In there, you select the bind, which in my case would be the W. You can save that shit. Oh crap, not like that though. <coughs> Alright, axis mapping, so I'm gonna add a couple mouse, <laughs> fine mouse pitch. And that would be mouse X. No, sorry, mouse Y. And then, ah, oh my god damn. Mouse. Mouse, yeah. Oh shit. Alright, and here, that would be mouse X. Ka kawaii, okay. Save all this shit. Ugh, ass. Okay, player. Now, to add mouse input, <coughs> what you need to do is get the mouse. Yeah. And from here, you call add. Yeah. Controller yeah input. Exit value goes into here, it's automatically correct. Pitch. Mouse pitch. Control pitch. Bam. Hell, you like this. Now you should have mouse input in your game also. <coughs> Let's try. Yep, but up and down is inverted, so mouse pitch will have to be inverted. That is why. At least I don't like inverted controls. I don't know about you, buddy. Anyway, in here, times. So you just put the little asterisk up in there. You get times minus one to invert the movement. Oh, yeah. <coughs> Compile once more, and you should have the right type of movement, so you can already do that shit. Other movements, if you need to be testing different animations, are things like jump, 
crouch and uncrouch. Er, there. We could just get like left control. Actually, what the hell? Left. Left control to crouch and uncrouch <coughs> and spacebar to jump. Yeah, like so. The uh, trick with the crouching and uncrouching is you have to go enable the player or character's ability to crouch. Also, saving all every millisecond is important. You can go into defaults. <coughs> you can actually, yeah. In defaults, I believe it is. Well, you can. This is for walking off ledges when crouching. Super important because you will want to do that. And navigation. We have agent props, and then can walk. I mean, can well can swim. Sure, can crouch also. Pop. Play. Uh, character is able to crouch and bounce. Air control is minimal unless you go enable it, which is from uh, 0.05 here. If you want 25% air control, you get it from there. So then you can kind of move around, maybe try some left fly animations and whatnot. Unless that's the very basics of it. Let's try and grab your model from here. Okay, so we got the FBX files just like this. Um, basically, what you do is drag this. Oh my god, I can't even remember. I think that's jump and that's run. So you just throw it in, click here. We have no skeletons. Import animation player run and import gives you all this crap don't care about it errors are always fake you know that <coughs> anyway to import the jump animation drop this little thing here and then instead of skeleton mesh just use animation select the skeleton and generally most of these should work let me go get the one from dropbox <coughs> here public which is these? <coughs> oh my god! Okay, put an animation. Wait, only oh, my. Oh yeah, need to tell this guy. Import. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't know shit. Man and bitch slap. Animation. Import. That's so good. Okay. So what we've done now is gotten all the beautiful animations. Now what we need to do is <coughs> an animation blueprint. So you get two here. Right click here, obviously. Animation, animation blueprint. Oh my god, so choose the select thingamajig. It is an animation instance. Kawaii. Wow, say it all. Another thing you need to do is a animation. Blend space 1D. This is for the running and walking and stuff. Select the skeleton. I would call it something like idle, walk, run, you know, because those are the animations included in this thingamajig. And save all one small, go into here. Okay, so this is a little different, but if you drag up from here, you'll actually get a secret menu that the assholes of this program have hidden from you. The bar here looks really tiny because of my resolution right now, you can see it there anyway. Anyway, <coughs> you can just take stuff like the robot idle, drag, drop it here. So now we got that, and then get the player run, drop it here, pull it all the way up. Oh my god, please, motherfucker. Okay, hold on. There you go, bitch. And what you have created? Mmm, stretchy. It's the good old mixture of animation and idle. But we want to go into the player run and change the rate scale to something like 3.4. Okay, not 3.4, I mean 2.2.2.2.2.2. Okay. That makes this much prettier as well. As you can see. If you want to be kawaii, you can add player run here again and drag it to like half. <laughs> so then your thingamajig will be like running. And then pure running at the end, not just like some sort of infinite mix. Also, we need to change a parameter. And that is, we want this to be player speed. Uh, by default, player runs at 500 units per frame. I don't even know. Unless 175, 400 should be just fine. Apply a power meter changes. Then you want to move these. Why can't I grab them? I used to be able to. Oh, I just did. Uh, uh, right there. Beautiful, beautiful. Save. So that's your blend space done. 
Now, this gets really kawaii. Because in the animation blueprint, you need a thing in jig called something with a T. Oh my god. Ahem. <laughs> Hold on. It was something beautiful. Tools, I uh, know. State machines, yeah. State machines, sure. Dad. State machines are really, really cool. You got your start. And then what happens after you start? Well, we want a new state, which is idle. Okay, so we start from having an idle animation. And in here, we can just uh, go into, see at the bottom, there's your blueprint and your asset browser. You just go into the asset browser, get your idle, and you can just slap that there. And you got it. And actually, we're going to do even cooler. We're going to get the idle walk run, and here. And then try get player spawn. A pawn in. Actually, that. Okay, look. In my blueprint, make a new variable speed. It needs to be the type of float. <coughs> and that is all you need to do. In the event graph of this thing, you need to add the event tick. Tick. Event. No, wait. It's uh, animation something called uh, update. Event blueprint update animation. Yeah, that is it. And here we want to do set speed. And then try get pawn owner. This is like <laughs> trying to figure out who's calling the animation. And then from there, you can just get velocity. Get velocity. Oh my god, it was there the entire time. I'm so sorry. Okay. Get length. Oh my god, length. It's vector length for some reason when you're talking about vectors. Nonetheless, vector length is just how long the vector is. Quite simply, how fast it is going. Okay, so speed is being set. We can go back to idle state and get speed. And ram that in there, so now it automatically animates the way it's meant to. And in here, if we want to start jumping animation, this is cool. You drag from the outer rim, out of state, call this something like jump begins. Because, like, we have animations for jumping that beginning and stuff. Anyway, here's the statement. When when do we move from idle to jump again? So double click that. Can enter transition is just basically will we do that. So we need to get if the player is falling. So we'll go back to event graph, add a new variable. We're gonna call it is falling. We could get a boolean and in here we can set it. And then we can just get get player you think I'm doing gets <coughs> Not even mad. All right. Yep, movement component. Oh my motherfucking god, bitch! I'm gonna slap you. Get movement components is falling. Hooray! Hurrah! Motherfucker! All right, get this shit out of here. Oh my god, stop! And then just bam, compile. Idle to jump again. And this is quite simple, you just get your VAP here blue from here, is falling gets. And if we are falling, then we must be jump animationing also. Well, jump again, we have to go into the jump loop. Oh my god, what am I doing at say? So bitch. I'm gonna fucking kill you. Jump. Oh my god! Jump loop. Oh fuck yeah. <laughs> Alright, jump loop. When do we go into the jump loop? Well, that's quite simple. Time. Left. Uh, seconds. Help. Okay, it's... Oh my god, you need to go into, like, jump loop? No, jump begin. Oh yeah, we need to go add an animation for jump begin, which would be Acid Browser. Fault, in my case. Whatever it might be for you. That's beautiful. Compile. <clears throat> go back into the magical world of my ass find the jump loop and time and now it's <sighs> left are you shitting my ass vault oh compile my help duh what's this can enter transition what? Oh, I'm doing that. Oh, we're in here. I thought we were in this. Jesus Christ. Time. Time remaining with a waltz. And less than. 
Time remaining for vault less than 0 0.1. So as long as the jump, vault, like jump beginning animation, is just about to end, then we change to the jump loop. This is the jump loop begin thing, by the way. So from here to here should be this. Anyway, now in the jump loop, we will just simply have to play. Man, got. Oh yeah, I we don't have an animation for falling, so he'll just do a beautiful T pose. Compile. Now to get back from the jump loop, we have to do a landing animation. Landing. Oh my mother of god. Landing. That will be switched from no longer falling. Is falling. Exclamation mark to get not. I like how bulky the knot is for no reason. It's super kawaii. Okay, so when we're not falling, we'll do a landing animation, and after the landing animation, when there is no longer time, oh my god, I can't really, well, fine, a vault animation can do for the landing animation for now. Some old bitch. Why not seeing shit? Okay, let's minimize this. Get the vault animation and put it there. Yeah. Compile, dad. If time left, oh my god, time remaining for vault less than 0 0.1 seconds. Obviously, in here, you'd have the player land on ground break ass animation, but basically, that's how a loop de loop happens. So, compile that shit, go into your beautiful, beautiful player. Actually, you might want to save all before it nukes itself. Go into player. Defaults, use animation blueprint, and in here we take kawaii, then in components, mesh, skeletal mesh. We want to have your running test animation, we'll need to drop him down a little bit, and we'll need to scale him a little bit. Lock this so he stays in scale no matter what one, one of my, what one of these you change. Nope, okay, maybe it's, maybe it's six. Close enough. He's not really on the ground, though, is he? Oh my god. One. Trust me, this is important. Alright, rotate this motherfucker 90 degrees. So he's going by the arrow right there, the penal arrow. Now let's add a component camera. W. Move that motherfucker up and back. If you want to, you can add one fucking degree of rotation in this and this X's to make it look more like a third person camera. If you play the game now, boy, you got a fucking robot walking around, jumping asshole. <laughs> Idle animation. <laughs> oh shit. Nonetheless. Tis my shit tutorial of whatever, 20 minutes of ass blowing glass. I hope you've learned something. And please ask me if anything needs to be taught more specifically. Unless, tis how you do it, most likely. Goodbye, my fellow friend.